Hi, 2024 was pretty awesome for me in this channel. I built five new robots, designed 12 custom PCBs, won an international sumo robot competition, and got accepted into uni, which I'll be starting next month. Plus, thanks to all of you guys, I gained over 5,000 subscribers and got sponsored by PCBWay, which made such a huge difference in my learning and the growth of this channel. Most of these projects were based on the ESP32 S3 microcontroller, but in 2025, I'm planning to include much cooler stuff into my projects like this, this, and this, just to name a few. Oh, and I forgot to mention, as opposed to using my bedroom as I currently am, I'm getting a new dedicated workshop in the home we're moving into, so stay tuned for some better content. Anyways, today I wanted to do a little review of the highs, lows, and best moments of 2024. So let's get straight into it. It was the start of last year when I posted my most popular video showcasing my first ESP32 S3 dev board, which was, funnily enough, my choice for my first ever microcontroller breakout instead of something like an Atmega. I designed it specifically for my line following robot in this more square shape compared to other boards so that I had access to all the same interfaces through these headers while still having room on this side for the motor driver. While all of the features technically worked, some were a little iffy, which made the board heat up like crazy during normal operation. And since I didn't have my thermal camera at that stage, all I can tell you is that you didn't want to touch it. Luckily though, S3P was still more than enough to use as the microcontroller in the line follower I would put together over the next month or two, which was my attempt at taking back victory after miserably losing in the previous year with this monstrosity. For LFA, I made two custom PCBs on top of the S3P, instead of making a single PCB with all the circuitry, because I was scared something would break. And despite the aesthetic sacrifices, smaller PCBs mounted like this onto a larger one are super easy to pop out and replace if any issues occur. Unfortunately though, even if the electronic side of things worked well, there were bigger issues I had to worry about, like the fact that the robot was top and front heavy, which made it rock around like crazy. Even though we originally thought this was because of poor code, it was actually entirely hardware based and was fixed with some nuts in the rear. Not those nuts, but actually these nuts. After that, I made a cool little ant weight robot using custom receiver and transmitter hardware that communicated through ESP Now. Because I didn't want to use a Malenki Nano and one of the really expensive radio transmitters I would need like everyone else, and would rather be able to customize my own solution. This project was really fun to build in code, but not very fun to solder, since this was my first time using the hot plate, and it was very easy to disturb the tiny components on the receiver board when soldering these big wires to it. At the end though, we had a very decent robot that was quite capable in terms of its speed, control, and traction, in part thanks to the silicone tires we had made for it. But because my driving skills are absolutely terrible, during the competition we got eliminated straight off the bat, and that's why you didn't see this robot in any actual fights. Oh well, at least I learned some cool stuff, because this year I'm gonna build something better and hopefully partner with a good driver. The RoboRave World Championship was getting dangerously close soon after, and since we had had registered for both the line follower and Sumo Robot divisions earlier that year, but only had a finished line follower at that point, it was time to get cracking on a Sumo Robot. I had always wanted to make a proper one of these. Seeing the countless robots from around the world doing these crazy maneuvers to knock their opponents straight off the ring looked so fun. And even though I had made a LEGO one the previous year with my neighbor, the coding sucked and the motors were stupid weak. So now was my opportunity to make something epic. This was my most complicated project by far. It had three custom PCBs with over 110 SMD components in total, and every bit of the power circuitry was built from scratch. Funnily enough, this was also the first time I learned how a MOSFET works, but even after all that time, I still find myself forgetting which parts the gate source and drain. Even if I had learned that though, I still hadn't and haven't learned how common sense works, given the fact that I'd put a vertical USB-C connector on the edge of the board, which was just lovely and very mechanically stable to plug and unplug as you can imagine. Anyways, other than that, everything worked well. The custom tires, the metal chassis, and the powerful motors, right up until the robot made some cute little sounds and lit on fire in my living room. I had no spare boards at this point, which was absolutely devastating. So I had to move to plan B, modifying a commercial sumo robot with, again, custom tires, a 3D printed top cover, a titanium front blade thing, and some extra weight to bring me closer to one kilo. And with the help of some coding magic inspired by this video, 
we climbed the ranks all the way up to first place in the international competition using this spare robot. In the main video showcasing the story, I tried to do a Michael Reeves impersonation, but I guess because I didn't include anything in the title or thumbnail about him, and maybe the same style glasses and mannerisms weren't enough, the video was probably my biggest flop when considering the amount of time I put into it. If you want to check out that video after this one, I put a card in the top right corner where you can find it. Unfortunately though, with the line follower, we came about 14th because our robot just honestly wasn't fast enough, even at this speed. Never mind that though, there was still some unfinished business with the sumo robot because I wasn't satisfied with winning with the spare. No, I had to win with my fully custom one. So logically, if I improved the custom one and made it actually work and then pitted it against the one that actually won, the custom one would be the actual winner, you know what I'm saying? So I designed a PCB for it shortly after realizing we were screwed before the competition and it was already at our house in just a few days and just needed to be assembled. Only difference is, this time it actually worked. That is, after burning through $100 of motor drivers due to, again, my poor soldering skills. But after that, coding it was a piece of cake. This new, fully custom robot easily had twice the motor power and traction as the modified commercial one. Because for this one, we made the tires extra thick and the results speak for themselves. After that, I was busy preparing for the SAT for a while because my parents found out that even here in Australia, a high enough SAT score as well as some other things like, you know, the projects I've done on this channel could be used as the basis for accepting someone who's younger into a university. That went great with a score of 1560, and before I got accepted in November, I was able to take one of my course subjects that counted towards my degree. All right, back to the channel, Rizzy was made for one of the tasks within this course subject. Since I wanted to show my professors what I had learned about PCB design over the last year and a half, I honestly loved the arrangement of the power circuitry in this one, and learning all the new concepts to make it was so fun. Then I got a bunch of new toys for dropping out of high school, Christmas, and my birthday, like a smart battery charger, a thermal camera, and an $88 Android phone. And with them, I made Tiny Drive, a PCB which mounted on the brushes of an N20 motor to make it much easier to use. This was only after I damaged hundreds of dollars of N20s in the years prior. But you guys won't ever have to worry about that anymore because you can buy Tiny Drive from PCBWay, who has generously supported me throughout this whole journey with high quality assembled PCBs. But they also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and so much more, which I'll definitely have to try out soon. This channel would honestly not be possible without them. So I'd really appreciate it if you used my link in the description to sign up and get $5 off your first order. Plus, there's some New Year's coupons, so there's no better time than now to sign up and make your designs reality. Now, you might be wondering, what will I be doing this year? Well, I can't be giving too many hints, of course, but apart from setting up my new workshop, making our new home smart, and smashing through my mechatronics degree, I can tell you some things we're going to be including in our projects, like USB-C power delivery, STM32 microcontrollers, high energy density batteries, audio uh, input and output systems, capacitive touch, brushless motors, um, DC to DC converters like- uh So if you don't want to miss any of the new exciting projects for this year, which you might even be able to buy on PCBWay projects, make sure to subscribe, smash that like button, and if you really like this video, please leave a comment down below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.